but I am leaving super early tomorrow morning to go to Disneyland and I wanted to make a video before I left and I keep trying to make this video and I'm having like social anxiety issues or something and it keeps preventing me from making a video. So I decided that last minute before I leave tomorrow for Disneyland, I'm going to come on here and talk a little bit about what's going on with my legs and what I'm doing about it and what my plans are for Disneyland. And yeah, anyway, so I'm making a chat, <laughs> making a video for you. This is easier than editing. Part of the reason that I've not made any videos is how busy I have been. And part of how busy I have been is what's causing the situation with my legs. So. If you haven't been watching me on Instagram um, or in my like community tab, you may not have noticed that I've been posting pictures of what uh, my legs are currently looking like. Now, I have to admit, my legs have looked like this for a while. I just haven't shown the upper part of my legs. Hi, guys. Um, so while it does look dramatic, it's new. It's not news. The only news is, is that I've kind of figured out that it's more of a problem than I originally thought. So I have a few minutes. I've got about 15, 20 minutes to talk about it before I go in to pick up my daughter from her tryout for her. She's trying out for a dance team right now. And my life is insane. I cannot even tell you. So rewind. A couple weeks ago, I did my first photography session of the year for for dance photos. When I do dance photography, I do a lot of posing the kids, like showing them the moves and standing for a lot of time. And I guess the standing is probably what triggered the issues that I'm having right now. Also, I have been keeping an eye on a couple of people on Instagram, um, Jessica Slashes Fat, and oh, now I lost the track of the, I always forget the other one's name, but I've mentioned her before. I'll try and link them in the uh, comments later or the about section later when I put this video up officially because right now I'm live. So yeah, I've noticed that they got diagnosed with lymphedema post tummy tuck. And that was really stressing me out because I started researching lymphedema and nearly had a full on panic attack. <laughs> literally, it sent me down a rabbit hole of doom and gloom that caused me to literally want to just say screw it and eat all of the things. Um, of course, that's my natural reaction going back into the past of dealing with stressful situations and scary things. I just wanted to say, see, I had no, there's nothing I could do. I'm obviously destined to be super fat and ugly for the rest of my life. That's literally where my head goes. Cause you know, that's where we all do, right? That's how we all get into the situation that we're already in, regardless of whether or not we have this natural disease or problem that causes us to gain weight. So for a long time, I've been talking about how overeating is my issue. Overeating is the main thing that caused me to gain weight. And while that is true, as I'm starting to do research and looking back into my past, I'm starting to realize likely this condition has been part of my life for a very long time. I don't know when it happened originally, but lipedema and lymphedema probably have been partially my issue for gaining weight so quickly my whole life. So. That sounds like it's a good thing because at least it puts a name on it, but it actually is a really bad thing because lipedema and lymphedema both are not necessarily curable. It's something that you will fight your whole life. And I've been fighting with emotions since I found out this. I've had a really, really time. Um, did I get the vaccine? Yes, of course I did. We talked about that on my channel before, um, but this is not vaccine caused. This has nothing to do with it. Um, I didn't have any issues with the vaccine. So... I don't even know where to start. First of all, what is lipedema? What is lymphedema? Because probably a lot of you don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I'm still trying to figure out what it is. <laughs> it's two different things that kind of go hand in hand. So lipedema is a fat disorder where fat is disordered. It creates, your fat will um, have lymph fluid around it and the lymph fluid will collect and it will cause like a little growth of fibrous tissue to go around the fat. When it's taken out in liposuction, it actually looks like little like balls of Play-Doh. And in fact, if you ever want to see what it looks like, there's a guy on Instagram, Dr. Lippy Popper. Trust me, you don't want to watch it. It's so, <laughs> but if you want to know what it looks like, Dr. Lippy Popper on Instagram. He shows it after he's taken it out of patients. So it's basically an abnormal way that your body stores fat 
And once it forms that fibrous tissue around the little fat globule, it makes it really difficult for your body to burn it off. Once you get to a certain stage, even with keto, even with low calorie, you can't get to that fat. Does that make sense? And so I don't know that I had it fully, but when I was losing weight, I often had these little hard, I used to call them like frozen peas in my arms, in my stomach, in my legs. And I used to think that I had like cancer, some sort of like growth. And now I'm realizing it was lipedema nodules, lipedema fat. Obviously, I was able to melt those and kill a lot of them when I was doing keto and doing the low calorie. Um, I don't know enough about keto slash low calorie with regards to lipedema to recommend it yet. Um, I'm still researching that. I actually got a book on that on that because everybody's talking about how keto is the cure. Well, it did help me, so I can't say it isn't. But in the long term scheme of things, I was having a lot of issues. If you guys have been here very long. You know that I've had tons of issues with body water. Part of the reason I went off of keto was because my water in my body would collect and I'd gain like six, seven pounds overnight. And then a week later, it would go back off and it would never balance out. I started to ca carbs back in and it seemed to really balance out. I got to a place where I was maintaining at 2150 calories, eating good carbs, eating nice things that I like to eat and feeling pretty satisfied, right? So, um, okay, you guys can't ask questions. They'll distract me. I'm very ADHD right now and in my feelings. So <laughs> I will, I'll try to answer that. Um, so that's what lipedema is. Lymphedema sometimes goes along with lipedema. And lymphedema is a disorder of the actual lymph fluid, lymph system in your body. So your lymph system, you have lymph nodes all over your body. Some of the main ones are like in your armpit. There's one here at the base of your neck. There are some in your throat. You'll feel them when you get sick. Mine are always swollen. Um, you have them in your groin, um, in the corners of your arms, in the backs of your legs, et cetera, et cetera. Those are where the nodes are. And then the lymph vessels go all through your skin. And they are what removes the waste from your body. So if you have a really good immune system, your lymph system is probably good. I have a really good immune system, yet my lymph system does not seem to be working properly. It causes you to have edema, swelling, right? I always am dealing with this. I've had many bouts of extreme swelling. In fact, after I had my ninth baby, okay, I only birthed eight of them, but after I had my last baby, I almost died of pleural effusion, water collected in my pleural cavity because it had nowhere else to go in my body. I was so huge. I would literally look like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. I was gigantic. And the doctors didn't think anything of it because why? Because I was fat. I was obese. So they did not see the problem that I was facing until I was literally almost dead because I was already big. They just don't pay attention. So the person, the, the person asked, I can't remember who, I uh, can't look, um, asked why I don't go see a primary care physician. The answer is kind of complicated. Number one reason, I don't have one. <laughs> Legit. I was having babies until six years ago. Um, I found one. I went to her one time. She did blood work. She never even looked at me. She said, good job losing weight. And then she moved. Since then, I haven't had the inclination to find a new doctor. Um, my kids have one that I could go see, but I haven't really been excited about seeing him. I've been searching for doctor. I've tried to make an appointment with several and they aren't accepting new patients. Every time I find one that I think might have some knowledge about this or like be receptive to this idea and won't just tell me lose weight. So it, that's the reason I haven't gone to see the doctor yet. That and the fact that I literally in, in the middle of my insane busy season. I have been editing dance photos for three weeks straight. My hands have cramped up. And of course that doesn't help with the leg swelling, having to sit at the computer for hours and hours. And that's the reason I've had to let YouTube go on both of my channels because I just can't do it physically. Just can't do it. I can't sit down and edit. And now I'm going to Disneyland tomorrow. So I decided I'm just going to make this live video for you to try and let you know where I'm at and let you know I'm not dead because I'm totally not. I promise I think about you every day. Every single day I think about you and I'm worried and of course I'm not making any money and I need to because I'm still paying my surgery. I'm like 
still owe a crap ton of money on my surgery. Okay, so lymphedema, back to lymphedema, ADHD brain. We're gonna make it, we're gonna make it, I promise. I got like 10 more minutes. <laughs> okay, so uh, lymphedema is basically where your lymph system doesn't function correctly. It can cause like someone to have one leg really bigger than the other one, mine is slightly bigger. Like if you have a surgery, it's very common in breast cancer because they'll take the lymph nodes when they take um, out the cancer, then you'll end up with like a one big arm or one big leg. It can be very debilitating. It can be very uncomfortable looking and very uncomfortable, painful. The swelling collects in your joints and it swells your skin so much that like if you touch it, you can burst it. it you can sweat. It can get cellulitis. You can put you like make you immobile. It's, it's terrible. Like it's absolutely petrifying, like terrifying. Reading about lymphedema has been one of the hardest things I've ever done. Um, facing up to what I might be dealing with in the future is super scary. All of the treatments for lymphedema are set to make it so that it doesn't get worse. It improves slightly so that you can like kind of live your life. But most of the doctors are just like, you're on your own. Good luck. Or they'll say, you're too fat. You need to lose weight. Well, my lymphedema didn't even become apparent until I lost weight. And the surgery triggered me to have a flare. My first signal and should have been my first knowing something was wrong was that I gained 30 pounds in six days. <laughs> Nobody usually does that when they have a tummy tuck. I figured, of course, I'm the one who gains a ton of water weight after I have my um, surgery because I've always been one to swell up. And I even talked to my doctor about the pleural effusion issue that I had with my baby. And I told him how I'm always swelling up. And he was just like, oh, it's fine. People swell. He obviously knows nothing about lymphedema. He should have probably known that I was going to be a problem. Now, could it be way, way worse than it is? Absolutely. I'm super grateful. My surgery went great. My healing has gone great. I have to be grateful for the positives. I look so good. My fear is that it's going to get worse and worse and worse. So, um, I don't exactly know exactly what to, where to say I'm going from here. Let me, I guess, let me tell you the things that I've tried to try and improve things that I've learned about lymphedema and how to improve it. Now, I think right now I'm struggling with lymphedema, not necessarily lipedema. I do have lipedema. Lipedema can lead to lymphedema. If it's clear as mud, that's how I feel in here. So I know, I know I'm not ready to make this video, but it is what it is. It's one of those things that doctors don't know about. And that's the other reason that I haven't gone to see a doctor is that most of them have never heard of it, don't know how to diagnose it, and are going to be completely unhelpful. So until I really have a good grip on it, I don't intend to go see someone for a diagnosis because number one, there's really no reason to get a diagnosis except to get my insurance to cover care. The only care my insurance is going to cover is maybe some expensive um, compression hose and also lymphedema treatment, which there's several facilities near me. I've already called them. They need a doctor's referral. I ask them for doctors who usually refer patients. The one that they told me was not a, a doctor. She was a surgeon. And the second one that they told me what had really bad reviews and is super far away from my house. So I have attempted, trust me, I have attempted in all my busy busyness. Um, also, I'm in the middle of dance competition season. We just finished nationals dance competition. So we just finished. And then we have a recital three days after I get home from Disneyland. And yes, I'm in it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It doesn't feel fine, but it is really, really fine. Okay. So what I have tried. Um, I eliminated all sugar from my diet. So, I, you know, I have been eating sugar because I've been enjoying myself and that's fine and good. But I did eliminate sugar from my diet um, because when I eat a lot of sugar, it definitely triggers the swelling. Um, I limited my built bars and I'm not having as much because they do have sugar in the chocolate on the outside and the maltodextrin could be a trigger. I don't know for sure. Um, I haven't given them up entirely because I adore them and they make my life happy and it's hard. But I have cut back way back on them. Um, I am not cutting back on carbohydrates right now. I am not doing ketosis right now. And the reason why is because 
my brain can't let this one thing go. And I'm still researching it. So I just picked up a book that I'm going to read on what the keto diet and lymphedema and how it's supposed to help. But the thing I'm, I'm hung up on is in ketosis, your body dumps all your body water out of all of its muscles, right? So that it, cause it doesn't need a whole glycogen in the muscle anymore. It's diuretic. It's part of the reason you look desiccated. I've often said that I look like all a shriveled up old lady when I am on it. I don't like how my face looks. I feel shrinky shrinky dinky. And, and that's well and good if you're going to be on a photo shoot or, you know, you're a bodybuilder and you want to look really lean, you want all that body water out, but I don't like how I feel or how I look with all that body water out. And number two, the number one thing I've heard about lymphedema is that you shouldn't take water pills, Lasix, that kind of thing. And it seems to me like Lasix and keto are the same. So I can't quite let go the thought that ketosis may help in the short term, but in the long run, is it making lymphedema worse? Because if it takes all the body water out of the muscles and everything, doesn't that mean that it will also thicken up the lymph fluid? Because lymph fluid isn't just water. It's made out of proteins and all kinds of things. And the less water you have in your body, the more gummy it gets and the more stuck it is. So one of the, the, the cures, one of the helps that you're supposed to do is drink a ton of water, which is opposite of what I normally do, and not take water pills. So it just feels like mm, I just can't make myself do it because I'm just too worried about it. There, I have to find the research. I have to see if there is any research. If there isn't research, it's anecdotes. And you know how I feel about anecdotes? Mm -mm. I don't want to risk my body for anecdotes. So... Don't have plans for the far distant future on how to lose weight at this point. Because I originally was planning to do a big keto cut this summer and try and get rid of this weight that I put on since surgery. And now I'm going, is it really weight? I mean, it is, but is that the best way to get rid of it? I don't know. Yeah. I wish I could be more clear and I wish I had better, better hate this. I literally have gone from feeling like the most beautiful, fit, skinny, amazing person to this monster that knows nothing and has, I went from the person who knows all the answers to the person who's like, I got no clue. I have no answers. So there's so many unanswered questions still. <sighs> Sorry, I'm trying not to cry because I put makeup on on purpose so I wouldn't cry for this video because I don't need to be crying. I don't got time for crying. <laughs> really, I do not have time to be a big baby about this. Plus, you know, when you're starting to feel bad, I'm starting in with the binge cycle stuff. And I felt that coming on right at the beginning. And I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. so what I ended up doing, I keep saying that what I ended up doing, and I haven't said anything that I've done other than sugar. What I ended up doing, I eliminated sugar, cut back on built bars, and I decided to eat as much as I want. I know that sounds really ridiculous because I'm trying to like, you know, lose weight, but I decided I'm not going to worry about counting calories or anything like that. I'm still focusing on protein. I'm eating whatever regular carbs I want to eat. I'm obviously not eating like processed foods and things like that. I'm not eating like, you know, tons of chips or fries or, you know, stuff like that. I would like to, but no, um, I don't know what's going to happen at Disney. <laughs> I'm super mad because my original plan was to eat what I wanted at Disney and just like enjoy myself. I want to try the blue milk. I want to try butterbeer and universal and like all the things that when we went last time I was keto and I didn't dare to try. And so I might still take a sip here and there. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to be miserable. I know I'm going to be hurting. I am in pain. Um, ever since that very first photo shoot day, it's been painful in my knees. So obviously I want to try and get rid of that pain. Um, so I've been exercising. I've been doing my same dance. I've been doing even more dance than usual. Um, I've been wearing compression leggings every single day. I hate wearing compression leggings. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. Part of the reason I wanted to get a tummy tuck was so I didn't have to wear any compression and I could just be like a normal person. But apparently being a normal person isn't in the cards for me. So I will be wearing compression leggings every day for the rest of my life. And that's fine. I'm, I'm finding cute ones and trying not to let it get me down and trying to be grateful for the small things that I still can look normal when I'm in my compression leggings and people aren't looking at my legs going, Whoa, what's wrong with that lady? So I'm trying to keep that 
whoa at bay. Um, I've drank a ton of water. I've been trying to drink um, at least 64 ounces, but which is hard for me. But trying for 90 plus um, gallon would be even better, which is so hilarious. It's the opposite of what I've ever done. It's just like everything feels like it's upside down. Um, what else? I'm trying to remember all the things I have done. Um, lots of moisturizing my skin because apparently if your skin is healthier. And so I've been using like CeraVe or CeraVe or CeraVe. How do you pronounce it? I don't even know. All over my legs and everything. Um to make sure that my skin is nice and healthy so that it doesn't end up like bursting or like being weak or thin. Um, I have been doing dry brushing for three weeks now. I've always poo-pooed dry brushing in the past. I know, you know, I'm like doing all the things I said I wouldn't do, but dry brushing does help the lymphatic system. So I've been doing that systematically, very, 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 very religiously every single day for three weeks. Um, I've also learned how to do self lymphatic drainage massage. So I pump my lymph nodes every single night before I go to bed, all of them. And I do scooping of my legs. Um, so there's lots of videos on YouTube on how to do it, but I still don't have a 100% handle on it, but it does seem to be helping. Also, I'm sleeping with my legs elevated slightly. Um, what else am I doing? Oh, I think that's about it. Other than, oh, recently, as in two days ago, I got myself a vibration plate, which makes me laugh because I normally would have made fun of vibration plates in the past. Um, because you know, it doesn't really exercise you, it just shakes your body, but because it shakes your body, it shakes up your muscles and twitches your muscles, which moves the lymph. So I'm trying to do 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night. And I'm taking it with me to Disney so that I can do um, at least 10 minutes when I get home from Disney every day. Um, I won't, I'm not, I'm not in the water yet because I don't have my pool up, but all summer I'm going to be in the water and as much as possible on my Disney trip, I'm going to be in the water because water also moves the lymph. Um, yeah. So I posted on Instagram a before and after for two weeks. Sorry, it keeps vibrating. I forgot that I didn't turn that off. I really should fix it. Maybe if I can right now, I don't know if I can. There we go. People keep messaging me. Um, yeah. So I plan to, um, keep doing with all of that. I'm going to be in the water in the summer. Um, and I'm going to try and get diagnosed of course, and see the lymph clinic, um, this summer if I can, because obviously I want to catch it soon. One blessing. It seems I'm in stage one or two of lipedema slash lymphedema. That's a good place to be and a good place to know about it and good place to have knowledge. Um, I could have been way worse off considering I was almost 400 pounds before I started losing the weight. I could have been in a way, way, way worse situation. I can be grateful that but even though the surgery triggered my legs to swell up and probably they will be like that for the rest of my life, that I have a flat stomach for the first time in my life and it's worth it. Um, I can just be grateful for being alive and for being able to dance and being able to run and all the things I'm doing right now, I'm doing it as much as I can in case I can't in the future and to prevent myself from becoming sedentary in the future. I'm pushing myself to go as hard as I can on the things I'm doing, but I have to admit it's hard. Um, I feel happier knowing that part of the reason my legs are so heavy is because they really are heavier. Um, part of the reason it's harder for me to dance this year is because my legs actually are harder to lift. So that's where I'm at. I know this was way all over the place. I totally meant to write notes and I just thought, you know what? I didn't write the notes and I'm not going to use that as an excuse to not make this video and talk to you guys because it's been so long and it's going to be so much longer because I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to make a video. But yeah, me on my vibration plate is pretty hilarious. Someday I'm going to film that for you guys so you can enjoy it. My kids think it's so funny watching my butt jiggle. My little six-year-old keeps coming over and poking it. Look at that. It's jiggling. <laughs> He's hilarious. <laughs> he makes my life for a living, you know? And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to run back really quick because I have about three more minutes before I got to go inside and pick up my daughter. I'll see if there's anything super important that I want to address. Cause maybe there's something I forgot that is helpful. Let's see. 
Okay, Saminok says, the overnight water weight gain happens to me a lot. I'm 13 months on keto and the electrolytes has always been a problem. Yep, me too. I don't know what to say about it because I haven't figured it out. I was downing like 11,000 milligrams of sodium a day. That's just, that can't be okay. Um, just so you know, I am, I cut back all the way on my salt and I almost died from it. Like I was so ill. And so I'm basically doing only, I think about two tablespoons of Soleil water a day, which is about 3000 give or take milligrams of sodium supplementation because trying to go no sodium nearly killed me. I couldn't do it. So I'm back to doing some Soleil water. Uh, let's see. Um, what made me go get diagnosed? I haven't been diagnosed. I just started researching it because of those two girls I mentioned on Instagram. Why can't I remember the one? Oh my gosh. She has such an odd Instagram name. Does anybody remember? Do you guys watch them? <laughs> one of them is Jessica Slashes Fat. I know that. But they're having the same problem post tummy tuck that I am. Uh, let's see, um, alternative medicine doctors. I mean, yeah, they, I have them near me. I don't know if they take my insurance. My problem right, right now is I have zero funds. I have spent every cent of my money on Disneyland. I haven't made any money on YouTube at all. If it wasn't for Built Bar, I wouldn't be able to pay for my surgery. And I'm already like getting to the point where I'm afraid I'm not gonna be able to make the ba base payment per month. So I don't got no money to go see anybody that's not on my insurance, but I will definitely think about it, look into it. Um, Dr. Leslin Keith, okay, I will look that up. Uh, yeah, I already talked about that. Um, rebounding on a cellulizer. Yeah, that's kind of why I got the vibration plate. So this person says, Cynthia Bastiento says, I have lipedema and it's greatly improved with rebounding on a cell cellulizer plus diet changes. I tried dry brushing and red light therapy. So far, rebounding has worked the best and fastest. Awesome. I hope that my vibration plate will be similar. Um, plus I do clogging. Thank goodness I do clogging. Dude, right? Go clogging. <laughs> Um, contact, why don't I contact Dr. Westman and ask him? Um, I could, I don't know if he'd be much help with this. I, I highly doubt he, he doesn't talk about it. So he probably doesn't even know about it, what it is. I don't know. I guess I could ask him. Haven't thought about it. Life is short. Have your butter beer and blue milk. I probably will. Thank you. Um, have I tried an elimination? Could this be exacerbated due to an allergic reaction to something you're consuming? Yes, it could my whole life it could be I'm completely gluten free and I have been since I went keto went back on gluten right after and, and got so sick so I, I am not eating any gluten at all um and haven't since gosh over a year um but it doesn't seem to be like affecting anything some things do set it off sugar for sure if I eat lots of sugar mm -hmm. yep bad stuff um yeah I don't know. <laughs> also, it's not year a year post-op yet. And supposedly you have to up to a year for the lymphatic system to heal. So it's possible. I still have some healing to do. Let's hope that that will improve. Uh, let's see. You are so pretty. Oh, thank you. Be grateful for some small things. At least my face is okay. <laughs> don't say that. Maybe if I say that, something bad will happen to my face. Who knows? Thank the Lord for my face right now. I'll tell you what. Um, look into intermittent fasting. I still intermittent fast every single day. I never stop doing it. I still do it. So it's not helping. Um, will I be at Disney at Orlando? No, I'm sorry. I will be in California. We couldn't afford Orlando. We really wanted to. My daughter is going to um, Walt Disney World on, I think, the 9th and the 10th of June for their anniversary. But I am going to Disney World with the rest of the kids because that's what I could afford because we can drive. Um, cardiologists can't help, but if you are looking for a doctor to diagnose this, apparently vein specialists are the ones to see. So, and I've already seen Dr. Catherine SEO. Um, I'm still researching though. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Um, I'm really sorry to go off topic, but can you tell me what mascara you're using on those beautiful eyes? Yes, actually, this is just plain Milani. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but it's just Milani. It's my favorite. But my eyelashes are long because I use Babe Lash Serum. So, uh, okay. She says she's seen Dr. Westman talk about it once or twice. You can reach out. He may be researched. Okay. 
Well, that's awesome. Hopefully you know something about it. I will keep you guys updated. I might make a video about Disney. We will see. It all depends on how much I crash and burn after recital. <laughs> I'm even two months behind on my other channel. On um, I have another channel, Hide and Seek. So if you want to see stuff that you haven't seen on this channel, I'm trying really hard to catch up over there. When I get home, I'm probably going to really push to catch up over there first before I catch up over here. So you're so sweet. Thank you guys. I got to go. My daughter's done and I got to go in and film her combination from a vlog. So I love you all so much and I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye.